Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Lone Wolf 902. In today's video, as you can see, I've got some various items here on the table. We're going to be turning a regular tent, which is blah, into an exciting new tent, which is awesome. So what I've got here is I've got a pair of scissors, I've got a sharpie marker, I've got a measuring tape, I have a stove jack from One Tigress right there. And I've got my knife, I've got some cardboard, and of course we've got a One Tigress tent. So let's get off of the table and let's get over to the tent and I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing. Alright guys, so here we have the tent of choice that we're going to be working with today. Some of you may already recognize this from back in the summer on the channel. This is the One Tigress Solo Homestead tent. It is an excellent tent. It features all kinds of doors. It has these windows. It has a semi floor area inside on both ends, but then the rest of the tent is actually floorless. You can pitch it with an awning. You can pitch it without an awning. Loads of options. Now this tent to me screams one thing and it screams wood stove, hot tent. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be installing a stove jack and I'm going to talk you through the process of doing it because there are some things that you need to be very, very cautious of when modifying tents to put stoves inside of. So bring the camera around to the other side and I'm going to show you what I've got going on inside. All right, so coming inside of the tent, I've got a few things going on right now. And if you guys are interested in seeing this tent outside of this video, actually seeing the review, I'm going to put the review in the end screen and down in the description of this video so you guys can actually see the full look of the tent. We're not going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about getting this stove, getting the stove jack, and basically turning it into a hot tent, okay? So what I've got today to model this up, to mock it up, I've got my Pamali T1 stove because that's the size stove that I'm going to be putting inside of this most of the time. I've got my One Tiger stove jack, which we've already talked about. And I've got my canvas bedroll, which is six feet long by, I believe, about 30 to 24 to 30 inches wide. We're going to mock that, use that to mock up the, the bedding area where I would generally sleep. And then I've got a table, or sorry, a chair. And basically back in the summer, I mentioned how this would be a roomy tent putting a table and chair in here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically model this for a sleeping area. So I'm going to lay this down where I would sleep. And then I'm going to put the chair in an area where I would generally dine, kind of just sit down and have a table and kind of mock things up to have it fit to basically look at where the ideal place for the stove would go. So I'm going to get this laid down, get this moved, get that moved, get everything moved around, situated. And then I'm going to explain why I chose that setup and basically carry on with how we're going to install the stove jack. All right, so I think I've got it all figured out where I want each individual item. And basically what I've got going on here is I've got the stove and I've actually taken a stick and I put it down in the pipe area where the stove pipe would come out. I don't have a short enough stove pipe and I'm not going to cut a stove pipe just to mock this up. So I got a stick placed in here on the damper and that's running straight up mimicking our stove pipe. What I've done for layout is I've got the stove situated kind of in the center. Now keep in mind this is a large stove. If I want to use a shorter stove, it'll shorten that distance up and it won't come out so far. I can turn this 360 degrees because it's out far enough. So I can have it face that way, I can have it face that way, I can have it face this way, whatever I want. So, being centrally located, I'm going to take you guys outside in a minute and show you exactly where the hole is going to go. But I just want to show you guys the setup and the, the layout and why I'm doing it this way. So, I have my canvas bed roll down here. This is, like I said, six feet long and I believe 25 to 30 inches wide. So this right here is where I want to sleep, okay? Nice lengthwise, and the reason why I'm choosing it this way is because there is a back door, but typically if it's snowing or raining, I'm going to come in before the bed. I want to come in, get my snowy clothes off, and not have to step over my bed. So this is back in the shelter. This is bedtime mode right here. Now, this shelter does have two moon-shaped windows. I can see out the window there, I can see out the window there. Plus, the whole front door that you guys are looking through, I can close, and it also has a mesh door as well. So, this is going to work great for fall, shoulder season, there's still bugs, and in the winter from blocking snow blowing in. So, you can see that I've got my chair set up here. Basically, what I'm thinking for this area is I've got my chair, and I'd have my table right here. Now, there are loads of room either end of this shelter. 
there is a little triangle sheet of material. So it is semi-floored. Over here we have a little bit of a floor. Over here we have a little bit of a floor. What I'm gonna use this area for is gonna be firewood behind the stove. This area is gonna be gear storage. So if I don't need the chair, if I need it out of the way, I can put it behind this pole area. I got all the wood over there plus all the other gear. So basically this rectangle space of no floor is all living space and the rest is storage. So I can have my chair here, my table here, stove. I could be cooking, eating, lounging. I've got both windows, I've got view. Really, really great setup. So I believe this is going to be the setup. Now I can sleep head this way next to the stove so I can literally just open it, put the wood in. Or what I'm most likely gonna do is head up at this end and basically just kind of reach over, throw some wood in, do that, and then lay down and go back to sleep. Also setting it up this way offers the opportunity to have two people. So I can bring one of my children in here and lose the chair and have him or her, whichever child I choose to bring with me, sleep right here in this area, way away from the wood stove. So this is the general layout of what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Now it is time to take the stove jack. We'll get this out of the bag. And this is a standard stove jack from One Tiger. So you can get these on Amazon. You get them on OneTigress.com. It, uh, it's, it's as basic as it comes. It actually fits the Smoky Hut and the Iron Wall tents. There's no weather flap on it. It's just the stove jack hole. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna get it outside of the tent and I'm gonna mark out where this is gonna go. So let's get the camera out, let's set it up, and I'm gonna show you what's going on and how I'm doing this. Okay, so if you guys can pick up in this frame, down below you can actually see inside of the tent. You can see that stick that I have coming out of the wood stove right where the chimney pipe would be. And then inside, or outside, sorry, you guys can see this hump right here. That is exactly where the chimney is going to come out. Now, the reason why I'm choosing it here, because originally, what I was going to do is I was actually going to have the pipe run out of one of those mesh windows. I was going to sacrifice one of the panels, but it's on such a steep angle that any breeze that the material would bump into the pipe and it would cause a hole or possibly catch on fire. So I want it to come out the top of the tent because it does have this nice little flat sloped area. The area that I've got picked out right now, like I said, the stick is here. It's not towards the end too far. It's not in. This basically will fit right over top of that, just like that, creating a nice stove jack area. Now I do have additional fabric from other projects. I can either choose to run this all year round and sew in the addition of another little flap, just like the iron wall and the smoky huts, however they roll up. You install the jack, so you can use it with or without a jack. On this particular tent, I'm gonna stitch this in here permanently, and then I'm actually going to make another panel out of similar fabric that will Velcro to the jack. So if I want to use it with a hot tent setup, I can. And if I want to use it without a hot tent setup, all I got to do is Velcro on some coyote tan fabric over top of the hole. But basically right here is where it's going to go. It's situated towards the end. I think it'll work out really great. Let's get out the knife and let's just cut the hole right away. Ha! Ah, no, we're not going to do that. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back to the tabletop and I'm going to put it down on the cardboard and I'm basically let's just let's get over to the table and I'm going to show you how to do this. All right guys coming back over to the tabletop do not cut the hole in your tent if you are thinking of doing that stop watch this this is the correct way of doing it. So I've got my sharpie I've got my scissors I've got a piece of cardboard which is going to be a template and then I have the actual one tigress stove jack itself so I have a measuring tape here and I'm going to take measurements of some clearances just to give you guys an idea of how much space is from here to there to whatever. I'll do that afterwards but I want to mention that I do have a video series on how to get started in hot tenting. It's three parts. One part is on safety. In that safety video I would have mentioned my personal preferences on having a minimum of 12 inch clearance from the sides of your wood stove no matter the direction with the exception of underneath because sometimes that's difficult. But I also mentioned 24 inches above the peak. So I'm gonna be using a two meter pipe on this setup and I will have at least 12 inches of clearance from all sides, okay? So very important to, to kind of note that, but let's get back to the stove jack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the stove jack on this piece of cardboard and I'm gonna mark out a template. So 
very, very simple. Doesn't have to be extremely perfect, but you, you kind of want it pretty perfect, as perfect as you can get it. So you're going to mark out a rectangle, just tracing on the outside. And you'll see why I said it doesn't really need to be extremely perfect at first. So we're going to mark this out. And I'll give you guys a measurement of the stove jack in just a second once I get this marked out here. Just going along the outside of the Velcro. Okay, so we've got our rectangle traced out. The measurements of this particular stove jack. It measures seven and a half wide and it measures nine inches long. The hole looks to be a three and a half inch diameter. Okay, the Velcro on it is, what is that, half? Three quarter, a pretty close to three quarter of an inch on the, the width of the Velcro. So double check that actually. Nine inches by seven and a half. So if I come over here, I've got my nine inches. <laughs> no, I don't. I made a mistake. So we'll go right there. Nine and nine. So I'm actually just gonna make a quick little square here. If you've got a square piece of cardboard that is very, very helpful, I'm actually not gonna be cutting with this. This is just for video purposes. I already have one made off camera. But I'm just showing you guys what's going on here. So we've got our nine by, what did I say, seven and a half? I'm losing it today. Seven and a half by nine. So we've got our cardboard cut out. So what I'm going to do is just cut it out and do this as rough as possible because we're actually going to downsize it a little bit. Because remember, we went from the outside of the Velcro and we actually want to go in from the Velcro. So I'm just going to cut this out real quickly and I'm going to take it over to the tent and I'm just going to verify that it fits in the area that I'm not chewing into the real estate of the tent's construction because I don't want to be going into a seam area of the tent. I want to stay completely away from any seams or any reinforcement in the fabric. I want to choose a spot that's open and flat and it's just a nice piece of open flat material and make sure when you're doing this that your tent is pitched very very tight. You want that fabric to be very rigid and tight. You don't want it to be loose and flappy because if it's loose and flopping around, what's gonna happen is when you do finish this and you do get it tight, cause you are gonna be cutting a hole in your tent. Now, we're not actually going to be cutting a finished hole in the tent. And what I mean by that is we're not going to basically sew this on the tent and then cut a hole. This is gonna remain on the tent permanently. And that's really important because this is still going to, it's gonna give structure so it's, it's going to give structure to that hole and it's not going to allow the fabric to stretch out when you remove this. This is going to be permanent. This is how I'm going to do it anyways. I want to make mine permanent. So we've got our cardboard cut out. We've got our stove jack. Now what I want to do is remember I said the Velcro is about three quarters of an inch. So give you guys an accurate measurement here. We are five eighths, five eighths. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out five eighths on my cardboard. I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to do five eighths in. The reason why I'm going to do five eighths in is because I'm going to be stitching the Velcro directly to the tent material. So I don't want the, the hole to be too big, obviously. So how this is going to work is I'm actually going to run a bead of silicone on the tent material once I get it marked out with the marker. This is going to stick to the tent after I take the tent down. So step one, take your cardboard cutout after you've downsized it, five eighths. Mark it out on your tent where it's gonna go. Take the whole tent down, take it inside your house, put a bead of clear silicone is what I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna place that on the silicone and I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna set it in an area where it's just gonna stay, it's gonna dry, put lots of weight on top of it. When it's dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to it and I'm gonna put it directly on the sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch all the way around. So this is gonna get stitched through the silicone, through the Velcro, right directly on to the tent fabric. After that is stitched and I'm happy with it, I'm gonna set the tent up to double check that I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna go inside with my scissors and gently I'm gonna take it and cut through the tent material and follow the outline of the stove jack, which is then gonna leave an area of just stove jack. 
That's the best method that I can come up with. I've done this many times at different tents. It's worked out really, really well. And it's a good fail safe that if you do slip up or you do kind of measure something, you can correct it when you cut the material around your stove jack. So I'm gonna do all of that and then I'm going to come back. It's probably not going to be today, obviously, because I gotta take the tent down, get it inside, silicone it, stitch it, and then I'll come back. So it'll be two seconds on the video, but it'll most likely be four or five days in reality. So that's basically how this is gonna get done. I'm gonna go and do it and then I'll be back. All right guys, before I do go, I do have to kind of show this to you. Uh, I wanna go over the measurements real quick. So I got six and three eighths for the width after I trimmed down the cardboard. And for the length, I got 7.5 inches. So 7.5 by six and three eighths is my template. That's actually the measurement from the inside of the Velcro. So it was just the gray material, not the black Velcro. And that is going to go up top. So I'll kind of mock it up here. This is basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the material up top, obviously. Mark out with the marker where I want it. Take it off. Take the tent down. Take it inside and do all the, the fitting, stitching, and whatnot. Before I go, I just want to point out that there, this is the window. So my chair is in there. So this is kind of one of the views that I have outside from setting it up with this configuration. I do have the awning set up, which also offers a little bit of rain cover and snow cover in the winter so if i do want to take my chair and come outside while i'm out camping i would have the wood stove inside i could sit here just like this my bedding is way in the back so no blowing snow or rain is going to get any of that wet and i could basically hang out right here and enjoy winter or a rainy day with the wood stove going and then when nighttime comes i drop these and i just zip the whole door shut and i'm good to go so I'm going to bring the camera over and I want to take some measurements of uh, what I've got set up here to give you guys an idea of the space that's available inside. Okay, so coming inside, I'm only going to be taking measurements of the grass area, not the material part. So this is just the open area that is floorless. So for the length of the floorless area, we have approximately 94 inches and we are coming at 80 inches wide, okay? So from the side of this wall to the stove, I'm looking at 27 inches. From the other side, I am looking at 48 inches. So that's a, quite a bit of clearance from the sides. From the back until it hits the floor area to the stove, I'm gonna be looking at 17 inches. And then from this way, to give you guys an idea from, uh, I'll go from the leg of the stove all the way back. You can see through that chair, 61 inches. So that is a lot of room. Now, talking about my sleeping area, if I can move this chair out of the way, the sleeping area is adjustable because I can move it wherever I want to. I mean, if I wanted to sleep this way, realistically, I could. Right now, I have, let's take a measurement of the side here. I've got four inches clearance from the edge of my sleeping pad or my canvas bedroll to the side of the wood stove. On the other side, I have to the edge of the tent, 10 inches, okay? So I could shimmy that way more or I could shimmy this way more, it doesn't matter. Just gotta be mindful of where your sleeping bag is located when you're kind of moving sideways. Now also keep in mind, I'm not gonna move that stick right now, but I can turn the stove sideways, okay? It doesn't have to run lengthwise. This setup right now, I think is gonna work best for me for being sitting here looking in the stove and I do have wood stoves that have side glass panels as well, which is why I want it positioned this way, because I have stoves that have two long glass sides on both sides, plus the front, so the entire tent will glow with fire, with light from the fire. Hopefully it doesn't glow with fire. I don't, I don't want anything catching on fire. Um, but doing it properly and safely, I feel that this will work without any issues. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my cardboard template up top. I'm going to mark it out. And when you guys see this next time, it will have a stove and some smoke coming out the top of it. All right, guys, it is day two on the hot tent conversion. As you can see, it is extremely sunny out today. Very, very bright, very warm. I don't know what's going on with our climate, but it was snowy, minus four degrees Celsius the other day. And now we're up to sunshine and plus 24 degrees Celsius in the middle of November. 
So that aside, I do have the tent set up. I'm looking at it right now. I've got the stove jack installed. I'm gonna take you guys over there right now, show it to you, and then we're gonna finish the installation completely. And then we're gonna light that stove on fire and have a good look at it. Okay, so starting off coming over to the tent, it looks like a basic factory built tent. You can notice I've got the windows open. I already have the wood stove inside. However, it's not set up because we do still have to cut the hole in the top of the tent. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, don't cut that hole, get that stove jack sewn on there before you cut the hole. So I'm gonna get the front awning set up or maybe just roll the door up for this portion of the video. And I'll get a closer look on what I've got going on with the stove jack, how I installed it. And then we're gonna cut the hole and get the chimney pipe through the tent. Okay, so just coming into the doorway, I'm just standing in the actual doorway right now just to kind of show this off. I put the stove jack exactly where I wanted it. I got it stitched in through the Velcro. Now remember when I said I siliconed it? There's a bead of clear silicone on the tent fabric and then the stove jack was placed onto that silicone. It dried overnight. The next day, I, I didn't do it actually, my girlfriend did it, so two thumbs up there for that. Uh, so basically we took it and we ran it through the sewing machine and stitched through the actual Velcro onto the actual tent body. Now I'm gonna explain why I did it that way in a little bit after I kind of finalize what I wanna show here. It's actually very, very clever. So right now it is stitched through the Velcro onto the actual tent. And then I took some more stove jack material and that was stitched above the Velcro onto the actual tent material. So now this little flap can be shut. All the rainwater will go down if you don't want to run it with a stove. And if you do run it with a stove, just like on your smoky hut, you could just simply open up your flap. The pipe will come out and off you go. Now, this flap will come down on the pipe. So picture there are pipe coming out of here right now. And what happens is the rainwater hits it and it goes around the hole. So nothing's going to go down into the tent while you're burning. Now you'll notice that there is no hole. It's just tent material still, right? We've got to go inside and we have to cut out the tent material inside of the Velcro to then open up that hole and then we can pass the chimney through. All right, so we're now inside of the tent looking up at the stove jack and you can see this is all double stitched. It is sewn on there through the fabric into the Velcro. There's no hole there. If I reach on the outside, I'll lift up that little flap and hopefully that hole will illuminate and then you can see what we're working with here. So hopefully that shows up a little bit better. We can see a clear hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to make a small incision on the tent fabric. And then I'm going to be using a pair of scissors and I'm gonna trace that all the way down on the inside of the stitching, leaving just the jack material. So let's do that. All right, are you guys ready for this? I have currently the piece of fabric in my pocket that I cut out of the tent. Here's what we've got. Stove jack opening in a One Tigress solo homestead. So this turned out really, really, really well. I'm really happy with the way it looks. I'm happy with the fit and finish. Super, super happy that I can get a wood stove in here now and have this as a hot, basically a hot tent, a heated shelter. So. There are a few more things that I do need to do. I do have to go around all these edges with clear silicone. I'm gonna be just using basically bath and like home silicone, just caulk it on there, brush it on with a little paintbrush. I'm gonna go inside and do the outside where all the stitching is, where all the edges are to really seal that up. Now, the reason why I went ahead and stitched the Velcro to the tent is very important. 
these stove jacks eventually wear out because they fray. So all these fab fibers and fabric pieces, they'll fray apart and eventually it'll get larger, larger, larger and worn out. When that time comes, I'm simply just going to take my knife and I'm going to cut the silver or the gray material completely out. I'm going to cut that out and what I'm going to be left with is exactly like the One Tiger Smoky Hut or the Iron Wall. It's just going to be that Velcro stitched on there and then I just grab another One Tiger stove jack with the Velcro and I stick it on there, flap over top, done. And then when I break camp, all I got to do is unvelcro it, roll the tent up, pack it away and off I go. But for now, this is going to be the stove jack until I decide to cut that gray material out and Velcro one on. So pretty smart idea. The flap is on there, but like I said, I do have to silicone all the edges to make sure it's watertight. Now I'm gonna get the door pinned open and get the stove pipe in there, get the stove in there and do the first burn inside of the very first hot tent conversion of the One Tigra Solo Homestead. So I've actually decided to not pin the roof out like an awning just because it is windy today and it's gonna be flapping all over the place and we do have a stove in here for the very first time. I don't wanna risk it. And not only that, it's gonna be a thousand times easier to film where I can stand here and not have this pinned out. So I got the stove jack, or the stove jack, sorry, I got the stove pipe, stove jack's there. I've got my spark arrestor. I'm gonna put on the top, pass this down through our stove jack. Get it situated on the stove and then it's going to be burn time. All right, I got the stove situated. Now, like I was saying, I can turn this facing this way, that way, this way, wherever I want it to face. Right now, I've got it facing that way. Open up the door and let's get some wood in there. Now, like I was saying, also, this whole area back here is for wood storage. So I got all the wood back here. I cut up some pieces of kindling that I just had laying around my yard. I've got some birch bark. We're going to go a little bit easy on the birch bark because I don't want to spit a whole bunch of nastiness up into the air and then it come down and burn my tent. I do have a spark arrestor, but birch bark, softwood, never a good mix. So, got some hardwood here as well. I'm going to set these in there. It's going to be a really, really quick burn just to basically say <laughs> there I did it. And then tomorrow, I will be going out in this for a hot tent camping trip if the temperatures go down. It is crazy, crazy hot out today. So thank goodness that this tent has windows. I'm very, very happy that this tent has windows. Both the front door and the back door are one gigantic panel of mesh also. So I might even just take it anyways. Even if it is warm out during the day, it's gonna cool off during the night. I could close all the, the mesh and just sit in here with a mesh screen house with the stove off. And then later on in the evening, I could shut all the doors, the windows. And even if it is still warm, I can leave one mesh door open. I can leave the windows open. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see in a future video if I do end up taking it out the very next day or if I do end up waiting another week or two for some really cold temperatures. But I will say there is a lot of room in here. There is a lot of room inside of this tent. And like I said, with the doors and window configuration, making this a very, very unique and a one of a kind hot tent on the market. So currently there are no models of this in a hot tent version. Will there be in the future? I don't know. I can't tell you. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, there is one and it's right here. Okay guys, here we go. First burn in the new tent. Everything's looking good so far. So it is already getting extremely hot inside of this tent. I think the shape is gonna do really, really well with the stove, I honestly do. It's not a teepee, but it, it's a nice, almost like a cathedral ceiling. It's nice, it goes up high and then it, it just goes out. So the heat's gonna wrap around this tent. And then like I said, we do have the two windows on either side. 
that we can unzip and there's two zippers on those windows so you can bring them up to the middle and then you can unzip a little bit and let that flap fall down or you can unzip all the way like I've got it right now and let in a lot of airflow so those windows are customizable to how much they're open which is really neat even if it's raining you can unzip them and it will open up underneath of that little flap so kind of like those little those little flaps that you have on like your, your truck or your car that you can roll your windows down and the water doesn't come inside. It kind of has that effect. So that's pretty awesome. Alright, so now we've got a very, very customizable hot tent. There is no hot tent on the market right now that can do all of this. Have two sides completely open, offer two awnings. If I want to pin both ends out, if it's rainy, I can. I've got those two half moose shaped windows. I've got a partially floored nice area here where I'm sitting, I'm nice and dry. I've got tons of room inside of here. I think you could probably fit at least six or seven adults in here just lounging and just hanging out. So this is awesome. I'm definitely in love with it. One of a kind right now. I'm definitely really, really happy with this. Okay, so to wrap things up in this video, I have to say I am extremely happy with how this turned out. The stove is probably a little bit too big. It is extremely hot in here. so. I might even downsize to my Timberwolf stove or the T1 Mini. But as I was going around the tent collecting some photographs and looking at it, I do think that having the stove situated this way with the T1, because I do have the side racks to the stove as well, I think the way it's positioned right now using the two side racks will actually give me a full kitchen area. And then I could sleep this way over on this side and then right where my body is right now, I could put my table and chair over here, have the firewood all back here, and then on the same area on the opposite side, I'd have my backpack and all my, my clothing, all my gear storage over there. And then I do still have the option to open the awning to sit outside underneath the awning if it's bad weather. So very, very awesome. I'm happy with it. I can't wait to use it and go camping in it. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. Just wanted to show you guys how I modified it. And you guys can adapt some of these methods in other tents or other projects that you have. If you have any questions, drop it down in the comment section and I will be sure to answer them. Until then, peace out and I'll catch you in the next video.